Hey guys! In this video, I'm going to explain the directions for writing the rough draft of your North Carolina Lighthouse research paper. Now, you may be thinking, well, hold on a minute. I did some research last week on a lighthouse in North Carolina, and you're right. So, what you did last week for homework, that was called preliminary research. It was your beginning research. This week, we're going to expand on that research, and soon you will have a five paragraph research paper on your North Carolina lighthouse. Let's look at the two things you have in your green online reading folder, which was on your desk when you came in this morning. First, you should have a North Carolina history lighthouse research guide, as well as your research from last week returned to you. If I did not return your research from last week to you, it's because you didn't complete that assignment, and that will make it harder to do your research paper this week. Remember that that research last week was counted as a grade, so if you didn't turn it in, you still have to do it. All right, so let's start by looking over the Lighthouse Research Guide. Uh, you have a paper copy of this, and this paper copy is yours, so you may write on it, but looking at your computer screen here, uh, you'll see a copy of the Research Guide, which is the same copy um, of what you have as well. So this Research Guide tells you exactly the information that you need to include in your research paper for every single paragraph. So I've already organized the paragraphs for you. All you're going to have to do is find the information and write the answers to these questions. And I'm going to show you the websites that we're going to use for that in just a moment. Uh, so first, let's look at the information that you'll include in each paragraph. Remember, when you write your paper, paragraphs should be shown by chunks on your paper. So leave a line in between the paragraphs so that you can space them out. All right, so starting right here with paragraph number one, it says that you're going to find this information on the Canoozy website, and that'll be the website you use for the first two paragraphs. Again, I'm going to show you how to find this website that I call the Canoozy website um, in just a moment. But you'll have three websites that you use all together, and this first website here is where is the one that you need to answer the questions for these first two paragraphs. All right, so let's look at paragraph number one. The first few questions you're going to answer are these. I'm going to zoom in. First, you're going to answer what is a lighthouse. That website will tell you what a lighthouse is. Now, remember, guys, you cannot copy directly from a website. That's called plagiarism, and it is actually illegal. You cannot copy somebody else's words that they authored and published word for word and say that they are yours. And when you write a research paper, you're saying that those words are yours. So you can't copy the words from a website. Okay. However, what you can do is read over the information in a website and put it in your brain so that you understand it as a fourth grade student and then write down the words that you understood as a fourth grade student. Okay. Meaning whenever I read over the rough draft of your paper, and that's what this is, it's going to be a rough draft. It's not going to be beautiful. It's not going to be perfect. We will take time to make it beautiful and make it it perfect. But for your rough draft, which is what you're going to start writing today, we're just getting our thoughts down on the paper. Um, so when you're writing your research paper, it should look like it was written by a fourth grade student. If it sounds like it was written by a college professor, I'm going to have to start checking into plagiarism, and then you'll have to go back into your rough draft, and you'll have to take out the sentences that were copied from a published website. Okay, I hope that makes sense. If not, do your best, and we can definitely talk more about that later, um, but just know Strict rule here, you cannot copy word for word from a pair or from a website. Um, so first you're going to answer the question, what is a lighthouse? Now remember, this is a research paper, so you need to be writing in complete sentences. When you did your preliminary research last week, you didn't have to write in complete sentences because it wasn't actually a research paper. You were just trying to find some answers to some questions, but this week, not only are you finding answers to these questions, it's a research paper, so it needs to go in complete sentences. 
So literally, the very first sentence of your paper is going to be something like this. A lighthouse is, and then you're going to fill in the blank. You're going to tell me what a lighthouse is. So this right here, highlighted in blue, should literally be the very first sentence of your paper. A lighthouse is, tell me what it is based on what you learned from that website. And then you'll answer the next question. Why were lighthouses originally created? What do they prevent? Um, in the past, when fourth graders have done this research paper for me, this was always a tough question for students to answer. And I think it was only tough because you actually had to read the website carefully in order to answer this question. So if you're thinking that you're just gonna kind of skim over the website and get the answer, not gonna happen, okay? You're gonna have to do some reading here. So why were lighthouses created? And then what do they prevent? When you prevent something, you stop something from happening. So what are lighthouses supposed to stop from happening? What are they supposed to stop from occurring? Now that that's two questions, so you should have two answers. And then the last sentence of this paragraph is where was the first lighthouse in the world? So then when you find the answer on that Canoozy website here, you will literally write the first lighthouse in the world was in and then fill in the blank, okay? All right, now that's your first paragraph. Once you answer all those questions and you write them down in complete sentences, leave a space here. See how we have like this chunk of space here? That's what I need to see on your paper as well. In between paragraphs, you should have at least, at least one line on your notebook paper where there's nothing written in between the two paragraphs. Honestly, two lines would be great, but at least one line. All right, now, paragraph number two here, you're still going to use that same Canoozy website. However, don't forget to use your preliminary research that you did for me last week. Because in paragraph two, when you go to answer these questions, now we're going to be very specific about your lighthouse, whether it be Cape Lookout or Cape Hatteras or Bodie Island. We're looking at your lighthouse. So you might have already answered some of these questions last week for homework. Okay. All right. Now for paragraph two, I've given you the first sentence. Okay. So literally where it says, write this sentence, I want you to write this sentence. This is the very first sentence for paragraph two. So literally when you write paragraph two, you will write these exact words. North Carolina is famous for its seven beautiful lighthouses. This research paper focuses on blank lighthouse. And then in that blank, that's where you would include the name of your lighthouse. Maybe it's Cape Lookout. So then your sentence will look like this. Uh, maybe it's Old Baldy, which is one that I love dearly. And then in that case, your sentence would look like this. Uh, but you just fill in the blank with the name of your lighthouse. And if you can't remember what is the name of your lighthouse, then if you look at your preliminary research guide from last week, that paper that you did for homework, it says the name of your lighthouse at the very top of the paper. So just copy it and fill it in that blank, okay? All right, now this is where, for the rest of your paragraphs, there are certain lighthouses where this information, it might not be answered on any of the websites, okay? And that's okay. But that should only happen for maybe one or two of the lighthouses and maybe only one or two of the questions. So when I check in with you guys this afternoon, I shouldn't hear, well, I couldn't answer any of the questions for paragraph two because it wasn't on the website. Okay, guys, I've done this research paper with fourth grade students before, so I know better, okay? I wouldn't give you these questions to answer if I hadn't already looked for them myself on the websites. Um, so there might be like one or two lighthouses where maybe it doesn't have a nickname or something like that. But then if that's the case, then you would just write the sentence and say, this lighthouse has no nicknames or unfortunately this lighthouse does not have a nickname or maybe you just don't even answer that question altogether maybe don't even address that don't even write about the nickname okay uh, but again that should only happen for maybe one or two lighthouses certainly not all seven 
All right, so paragraph two, here are the questions you're gonna answer in complete sentences. So first, does your lighthouse have a nickname? Most of them do. Um, where is this lighthouse located? Be as specific as you can. I mean, if the website will tell you like down to the name of the street, include that. If it will tell you the city, include that. So be as specific as you can. Uh, the next question you're gonna answer, when was this lighthouse built? So give me a year. Cape Hatteras was built in blank. This lighthouse was built in the year blank, okay? And then, now for some of you, you can write about this. If, if it has been moved or torn down and rebuilt, then include that information. If it is the oldest lighthouse, then include that. Um, now, for some of your lighthouses, I mean, you know, you think about it, lighthouses, they're, they're on the coastal region of our state. They literally are bordering right there next to the ocean. So sometimes they do get destroyed by um, harsh waters and tropical storms and stuff like that. That does happen. There are a couple of your lighthouses that have actually been destroyed on more than one occasion and they've been rebuilt or they've been picked up by heavy machinery and relocated elsewhere. Um, so if your lighthouse has been moved or torn down, and rebuilt, then you need to include that. Um, and then also, why was this lighthouse built? Um, so this is different from paragraph number one. You know, in paragraph number one, you know, you're just telling me the overall purpose of a lighthouse. But in paragraph number two, I want you to tell me why was your lighthouse built? What was the specific reason for building your lighthouse? All right, now we go down to paragraph number three. Paragraph number three is going to be all about like the appearance of it, the height of it, the size of it, what's it's made of, the materials that were used to build it, all that good stuff. Uh, so paragraph number three, describe the appearance of the lighthouse. Check your preliminary research because I do believe you had to describe it to me. Now keep in mind though, for a research paper, I need more than two or three words, okay? It's tall is not going to cut it. It's big and red is not going to cut it. Okay, so we have to actually be specific here. Uh, tell me what are the colors and are there any patterns? And again, that should be in the research, not just from what you see when you look at a picture of your lighthouse. Um, what is this lighthouse made out of? So give me like the building material, like brick or clay or stone or stucca that's another building material so tell me what it's made out of uh, how tall is it if it is the tallest or shortest then include that information how many steps are inside the lighthouse how many miles or nautical miles does the light shine nautical miles that's how we measure miles when you're actually out in the ocean so that this question basically means how far out can you see the light shine if you're on a boat on the Atlantic Ocean? Can you see the light shine if you're three nautical miles away? If you're 10 nautical miles away? If you're 100 nautical miles away? Um, so how far out can you be in the water and see the light shine? And again, that's only if the research tells you. And then how often does the light shine? Um, can you, does the light move in like a circular motion? Does it blink every like three and a half seconds? Tell me that information. All right, paragraph four. Is this lighthouse still functional today? Functional means does it work? So is the lighthouse like a fully functioning lighthouse that is still serving its purpose and it's still used today? Or was it used in the past and now it doesn't work anymore, but it's more of just like a, a historical monument, a landmark in North Carolina? Tell me that information. Um, what time of the year can the lighthouse be climbed? That's on the Seven Coastal Lighthouses website, and I'm gonna show you that website. Ocracoke, if that's your lighthouse, Ocracoke cannot be climbed. Okay, so I'll go ahead and tell you that now. And that is the only one. 
So if you're not Okra Coke Lighthouse, you better be able to answer that question. But if you are the Okra Coke Lighthouse, that cannot be climbed. So instead, explain how the lighthouse is accessible and what famous pirate stayed there. Um, so accessible, that just means like, how do you get to it? How do you actually like walk up to that lighthouse? What are the procedures for that? Um, and tell me what famous pirate wants to live there. Okay, and then paragraph five, uh, this one's kind of like a freestyle. It's going to look different for everybody. I just need you to include three to five interesting facts about your lighthouse. And I know that that's in your preliminary research. Okay, you should have some things from that research you did for me uh, for homework last week that has some interesting facts there. And three to five, that means you have to put at least three facts, but you can put four or five. So you can't have less than three and you can't have more than five. It has to be three, four, or five interesting facts. Okay. Um, now you have your very own copy of this and feel free to write on it. I've had fourth graders in the past use this research guide as like a checklist. And whenever they would answer a question, they would just kind of put a check mark here. I wouldn't cross off the question because if you need to go back and look at it, if you've scribbled all over your paper, it's going to be kind of hard to go back and, and reread. But maybe, you know, if you just want to put a check mark beside the question as you answer it, then that could be a really good way for you to keep track of what you've done and what you've not done um, because you're not going to finish this thing today guys okay you're not even going to finish it by tomorrow i'm literally giving you an entire week from today to work on this and just have the rough draft turned in okay so that means if you're an a day student you're working on this starting on monday and you don't have to have this turned into me until monday of next week Okay, so you don't need to go home and be panicking about how you have to get this whole thing done today. I'm literally giving you a whole week, and that's just for the rough draft, which means what you bring me on Monday is not going to be perfect. There's probably going to be some spelling errors. There's probably going to be some capitalization and punctuation and some grammatical errors, and that's okay because this is a rough draft. Do not stress yourself out right now about punctuation and capitalization. Just write how you normally would, but of course, in complete sentences. And then if you're a B-Day student, you're starting this research paper on Tuesday, you don't have to turn it in until Tuesday of the following week okay um, now while we're talking about due dates and stuff um, a day students I will see you again on Thursday at Drexel and you will be able to work on this in class B day students I don't see you again for the rest of the week you don't come to school on Friday Friday is a remote learning day now you can still work on this of course on thursday and friday at home but just remember you won't have me on friday to kind of go over this with you um so you know if you have any questions b day students you need to let me know before you leave school today and of course from after that you know you can always get to me on google classroom and stuff like that uh, so just keep that in mind all right so let me show you the websites that you're going to use so i'm going to leave the research guide for just a moment I'm going to go back to your student assignment chart, and here it says links for North Carolina Lighthouse Research Paper. Here are the three links you're going to use. So remember in your research guide for the first two paragraphs here, I said use the Canoozy website. Here's the Canoozy website. It's the very first one. So we're going to click on the website here. Okay. And it's going to redirect us to where we need to be. Um, so when I scroll down, this gives us some really good information here about lighthouses. And you can see it's not a very long website, okay? Because um, down here at the bottom, there's a lot of stuff on there that you guys really don't need. Um, so all this down here at the bottom, you guys don't need this stuff, okay? You, you just need the text. You need the information. Uh, so if you start right here reading the beginning of the website, it says, what is a lighthouse? It is part of a light show. Or is it a different kind of traffic light? 
Well, it's like a giant signpost standing tall in the sea. So, see, I can obviously tell this was not written by a fourth grader, but when you read this, just put the information in your own words. Um, and if you look right here at the next paragraph, it does actually begin telling you, um, actually right here in the first paragraph, I see it now, right here in the first paragraph, it actually does tell you what a lighthouse does, like what it's used for, okay? It says it right there, and then it also tells you right here in the next paragraph as well. So see, you, you just have to read, guys. You really just have to read the information, and you can find the answers to those questions. And that's why I'm giving you a whole week to do this, because it is a lot of information, okay? All right, so that's the Canoozy website. You're going to use that for the first paragraph. Um, and maybe, yeah, also some of the second paragraph as well. The other website we have right here, it's called NC Beaches. And at the very top of this website, you'll need to click on the name of your lighthouse. So I'm going to pull up that website and see here at the top, it has the names of different lighthouses so you'll be able to click on yours and get some very specific information but don't forget the very first page it pulls up here this is information about lighthouses in general um so like it begins saying north carolina is filled with treacherous coastlines and we are north carolina is actually known for having rocky shorelines, rocky coastlines, um, which is one of the many reasons why we need a lighthouse, hint, hint. Um, so North Carolina is filled with treacherous coastlines, sounds and rivers that have required lights to warn mariners of shoals and other dangerous objects. So it does start to give you uh, just some good information about lighthouses in general. But if you'll click up here on the name of your lighthouse, like Curry Tuck. I think Curry Tuck is a beautiful one. So let's click on that one and see now all of this information here is just about the Curry Tuck Lighthouse. Um, and so we've got some good information here. Um, I can even see construction of the lighthouse began in 1873. So look, it's right there tells you red bricks were used in the construction so sailors could distinguish curry tuck from the other towers of north and uh, north carolina so see guys if you'll just read gives you a lot of information right here it says the pattern of the warning light is three seconds on and 17 seconds off the light can be seen 19 nautical miles out to sea so see without even really trying i'm already finding so many answers to the questions that you guys need okay this is going to be a really really good website for you guys um it gives you directions to the lighthouse and then here it also has lighthouse facts um like i know one of the questions you need to answer is how many steps there are in the lighthouse right here it tells you there are 214 steps up the spiral staircase um now you can also use some of these sentences here as your um like interesting facts for the last paragraph. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. So here's another really cool website. And any of these lighthouses up here that you click on at the top, it's gonna give you all that information. Uh, so here I can already see Oak Island was constructed in 1958. It's 148 feet tall. Um, I can see it was gained ownership October 18th, 2004. Again, here's the directions and we have more lighthouse facts, like how there's 134 steps to get up to the top, which is the lantern gallery. So see guys, it's all there. You just gotta be willing to, to read the information and, and just take your time. I mean, you've literally got till next week until this is due, okay? All right, and then one more website I'm gonna show you. This is uh, visitnc.com. You have to scroll scroll up and down to find your lighthouse. So the one I just showed you, NC Beaches, you click up at the top to find the name of your lighthouse and you just click on it. This one you have to kind of scroll and I'm going to show you how to do this one as well. Okay, uh, so you can see here it starts off, I'm just going to scroll down, scroll down. Number one, it gives me Curry Tuck Beach Lighthouse. If that's not your lighthouse, keep a scrolling. 
Then it gives me Bodie Island or Body Island. I call it Bodie. Um, and again, here's some information. If that's not your lighthouse, keep scrolling. Cape Hatteras tells you where it's located. And this one does have a nickname. See right here? It says it's commonly referred to as America's Lighthouse and was completed in 1870. If you're the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse, there's the nickname. It tells you right there. It's commonly referred to as, that is a nickname. Uh, number four, here's Ocracoke. Number five is Cape Lookout. So see, we just have to keep reading. You can climb it mid-May through mid-September. Number six is Oak Island. Again, gives you all your information and when you can climb it. And number seven, Old Baldy, <laughs> and tells you when you can start climbing this one as well. So all the information is here. You just got to navigate these three different websites. Um, so I'm going to give you guys plenty of information to, or uh, plenty of time today to work on reading through these websites and go ahead and begin writing the rough draft of your paper today. So what that means is Probably the best place to do this would be in your homeroom reading notebook. So in your homeroom reading notebook, if you'll just open up to the next page, um, that's where I want you guys to go ahead and start writing just the rough draft of your North Carolina Lighthouse research paper. Um, and just do as much as you can today. You know, you might not have a lot of time to really kind of dig in and write your paper today, but that's because you're having to learn how do I write my paper and what websites do I go to? And you're having to learn how to use a research guide. So it's okay if you don't get a whole, whole, whole lot done today. But, you know, of course, just do what you can. Because, of course, you do still have some Khan Academy assignments you need to work on. So you can't just sit here and work on this for like the next two hours. Okay, you've got other assignments you need to do as well after this. Um, all right, so before I leave you, here's one thing I do want to show you. This is a fourth grade student I had a couple years ago named Will, um, and this is actually his North Carolina Lighthouse research paper. Um, yes, it is typed, and he does have a picture of it, but this is a final example. This was not the very first thing he wrote, okay? The very first thing he wrote was a sloppy, rough draft, and we had to go back in and read it together, and we had to fix some capitalization errors. We had to fix some spelling errors. We had to work on some sentence structure so that the sentence would make sense, uh, but just know that this is kind of like hashtag goals. This is like your, your, final, your final draft, and yes, yours will be typed. This is what your final draft needs to look like. Now, I'm not going to read this whole thing to you because some of you, he had Kate Patteris and some of you have Kate Patteris. And of course, I don't want you copying his research paper because that would be plagiarism. But just kind of look at the first couple paragraphs here. Um, a lighthouse is a tower with a light in it. That sounds like a fourth grade student, doesn't it? It's not written by some college professor. I mean, it's a perfect sentence. Lighthouses were built to stop ships from crashing. Ships crashed so much around the North Carolina coast, it got the nickname the Atlantic Graveyard. So see, I mean, just a, beautiful, a beautifully written first paragraph there. And then the next paragraph, North Carolina is known for its seven beautiful lighthouses. This research paper focuses on the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. This lighthouse has the nickname America's Lighthouse. This lighthouse is in Buxton, North Carolina. So see, I mean, it, it's very, very simple. It's so simply written, but so organized and easy to understand and follow. So this is kind of like your goals here. Okay, guys. So again, I'm not going to give you access to this because it's his paper, um, but we can certainly pull it out in the future if you guys need me to kind of go over it with you. All right, friends. So this is where I leave you. Okay. You have the research guide. You're going to go ahead and get started right now with paragraph one in your student assignment chart. You've got those three websites. You're going to start with the Canoozy website and then actually Actually, I'd go ahead and open all three. I would have all three open as tabs at the top of your computer screen and then go ahead and just get started from there. Um, 
And yeah, I think that's all I have to tell you guys. So make sure you go ahead and start writing your rough draft now on the paper in your homeroom reading notebook. And I will check in with you guys this afternoon before we start math. And if you have any questions, concerns, or comments, let me know then. All right, guys, go ahead and get started. Uh, work on this for a little bit. I come back in the room at 1140. Um, so when Miss Towery is in the room, I would say probably at like 1120 and you can see the time on your computer screen or you can turn around and you can see the digital clock I have on top of your mailboxes at about 1120 you need to go ahead and get on Khan Academy. So when I come back in the room and I finish teaching all my math blocks, I shouldn't see you on working on the lighthouse paper. I should see you on Khan Academy because you have all week to work on your lighthouse paper. Okay. You have plenty of time. So don't kill yourself trying to get it all done today. All right, guys, I will see you in a little bit and we'll talk more about this. All right. Bye. Good luck.